Hi guys, so we're going to do a little bit of a different video today, kind of a strange one for me to do, but um, we just thought it was a good thing to do as a one-off, really, I, don't, I kind of don't want to bring it up anymore. Um, but I just wanted to talk a bit about adversity and, and trying to get through things and not letting people put you off or your own brain put you off. Because I mean, it's seriously crazy times at the moment. So I know how difficult it is for everyone, they can't get to a gym. And a lot can't get motivated, and especially when they've had time off, they find it hard, you know, to get back to the gym. But you can do it, there's no question. And I just wanted to talk about a few things that's happened to me in my life that changed the path of my life as well. Um, basically, when I was 18, um, I started competing when I was 18, training out of my mum and dad's garage. <laughs> um, and did really quite well in shows, even though I'd never been to a gym, I'd never sort of been to a bodybuilding show. And at that point decided I wanted to be a professional bodybuilder. So did everything that I could to try and do that, other than take the drugs. Um, and by no means am I saying that that's um, the secret, because it's not. Um, but to get to, you know, I wanted, I wanted to be the best bodybuilder in the world. It's as simple as that. There's no point me beating around the bush. I wanted to be Mr. Olympia and felt that like I could be Mr. Olympia. Maybe as arrogant as that sounds. But my my sight was that if I trained harder than anybody else, then that would happen. Um, unfortunately for me, that wasn't the case. Um, at 25 years old, I suffered heart failure. Um, left ventricular cardiomyopathy, which is about as bad as it gets and um, was told to say goodbye to my mum and dad um, the day I was taken into the hospital um, because I wouldn't see them by the next day. And somehow I did um, and things got better, which to this day, they still don't know why or how they, they use me as a case study at Leeds General Infirmary. And I would again just like to thank the staff there for that time because they were amazing um, at looking after me. Um, particularly a doctor called Greg Reynolds, which I probably shouldn't say on here, but I still feel I need to. So I still feel I'm here because of him, really. Um, but obviously that was not only a massively devastating time for me and my family just in general, but obviously for me as a bodybuilder, because I wanted nothing else in life and had nothing else in life that I wanted to do. Um, so at that point, I had to change things. Um, fortunately, I recovered exceptionally well. Um, and still trained, went, well eventually went back training um, and, and got heavier than I'd even been before. Um, I got to a body weight of 284 pounds um, naturally, um, which I know a lot of people don't believe, but I did. Um, I was about 269 when they took me in the hospital um, and dropped back down to a body weight, I think after that. Um, over a period of time down to about 200 um, but anyway getting past all that yeah basically what, what that did was I then knew that I couldn't do what I wanted to do fully because I'd got to a stage where even though I was super heavy um, and big I suppose it, I didn't feel that but other people saw that um, that to be Mr Olympia or get to that level then I was going to have to take the drugs um, and again, that's no reflection on the sport at all because it's everything else. But the drugs are kind of the icing on the cake to take you to that level. There's no point beating around that bush. That's as simple as it is. Unfortunately, nowadays, it's the other way around. The drugs are the be all and end all, unfortunately. And hard training's lost. Um, and masses of food. But again, that's another issue that we'll talk about another day. But, you know, I, I still competed, still did really well, but I couldn't go to that level of... I still train crazy hard, which I still do now, which hopefully you can see on the videos, everything I've got every time. But the training that I did before um, the heart problem was just psychotic, to be honest. You know, there were, um, I used to get basically carried to my car after a workout, and that's not an exaggeration. My training partners and things would tell you that, you know, if um, at that time. So, but what I'm trying to say is, is that you can still carry on. Um, I know there's people with illnesses that can't carry on, so don't get me wrong, but you know, the, everybody's going to get some adversity in their life and you can push on beyond that. You know, I've got, I've still got things that affect me. I've got a hiatus hernia, which I've had for years, but I was told there was no point getting it done because it would just open back up while I was training so hard. So there's days when I don't eat very well. I, I have days where my stomach is like a football. Um, 
and I can't do anything about that. You know, it just bloats out unbelievably and I barely eat anything. Um, but you know, you just push on. If you want it bad enough, you push on. So I still wanted it bad enough, even though I couldn't go to that level and still do really. I still train just as hard, eat as best I possibly can. So what I'm saying is there's no excuses not to get your ass to the gym at the end of the day. Um, you know, I don't care if people want to be 20 stone overweight and they're happy, that's fine. Just don't moan about it. The thing I can't do with is people that moan about it when all you need to do is get off your ass and go do something about it. You know, I know people are on medications for certain things and, and some people can and I completely get that. But the ones who can where really it's just a mental blockage Either do it or don't. Don't moan about it and get on with your life. Or get off your ass and get to the gym and do something about it. That's what, that's what you need to do. You know, I still suffer from all from all this stuff. I had to take I had to take tablets when I came out of the hospital that lost all my hair. You know, it's affected my liver. It's affected my eyesight, and I still have to live with that on a daily basis. You know, and that's hard, but you have to get up and get on with it. And, and it's the same for you guys, and I'm not being arrogant here, and I'm not trying to say, don't be lazy, but if you want it, go after it and get it, you still can, you know, so I just wanted to do this video to try and encourage people to, to just go after the dreams really, you know, I would have, that was just a major blow, so I couldn't carry on to that, to that degree with the things that I needed to do then to get to that point, um, but you know, I still carried on after that and did competitions and you know, I've ended up owning my own gym. Um, so you can still do things, you know, my life will never be as fulfilled because that's all I ever wanted. But you know, again, you have to get out of bed in the morning and do something, you know, and be happy about that. And you know, if this, all I wanted to do today were hopefully just, it may help one person even. I don't want, or you know, amazing story. It's not about that at all. Um, I've hated talking about this, I don't like it, but me and George just thought this might be a good video. You know, when my book came out, um, they wanted me to put this in the back of the book and I argued it for months and said no, 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 until my dad sat me down one day and said, look, just put it in the back of the bloody book um, because that's what they want. Um, so we just thought we'd do this one video and that's all it will be on the heart thing and the health issues that I have and I carry every day, but I don't care. <laughs> It, it, it's this is what I love and I'll always do it till the day I die simple as that and you know and if it, it's going to affect me there's no question but at the moment I'm very lucky that I can train as hard as I can you know and most of the time I can get my meals in and things so it's the same for you you know literally I've said it twice I'll say it one more time get off your ass get to the gym and just go after it and you know, don't let people tell you you can't do it because you can do it and you can do it a lot more than what most people think because I was the skinniest kid. I left school at 16 years old at five foot 10 and I was a hundred pounds, literally 100 pounds. And like I say, my heaviest body weight was 284 and that took everything. I would get up through the night and eat a tin of tuna if I needed to or I'd get up and eat hard boiled eggs if I needed to and go back to bed. You know, there were times when I worked for British Steel with my brother where I'd train, I'd train on the morning for literally a quarter of an hour. I'd go, I'd go to a 12 hour shift lifting steel all day and then I'd come back and finish it off at night. It's whatever it takes and it can be done. So don't let anybody tell you it can. So like I say, if this video helps one person alone, then it was worth us doing it today and me talking about this today. So, you know, get up, get out and get after it and don't let anybody tell you you can't.